Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. Yesterday evening, the weatherman was saying that the weather today was going to be cold and damp and rainy. We might get a thunderstorm or two, and I thought, ah, that would be a great day to bake bread. And this morning the sun is shining and the birds are singing and oh well I'm going to bake bread anyways. I've baked a lot of bread, hundreds of loaves of bread. It has been such a routine for me every other weekend to bake two loaves of bread that a friend might call and say, hey let's drive up to wine country today. Uh, today's my day for making bread. <laughs> That's how much of a habit it is for me to bake my bread. Today I'm going to make two loaves of French bread for a couple of reasons. One is I have, well, a few reasons. One is I haven't made French bread in front of the video camera before, so I'm going to do that. I have a friend who loves my French bread, so I'm going to make two loaves of French bread, keep one for myself and give one to her. And just recently I watched on DVD an old video of Julia Child making French bread, and it was wonderful because she's saying three and a half cups of flour equals one pound, and she's scooping her flour right out of her, and I'm like, no. Three and a half cups does not equal up. Oh, this ought to be good. And I'm watching her and she puts her, her flour and water together and she has this look of, uh-oh, on her face as she's starting to combine it. So she takes her dough out of her bowl. The bread still has a lot of flour in it. She puts the bowl aside and puts the bread down and then she looks at the bowl and hides it in the sink so you won't see how much flour is still in it. And then she's kneading her dough. Yep, this is still a little bit stiff. I must have measured it wrong. <laughs> so let me teach you the difference on flour because baking is chemistry. Flour that is scooped, that is you take your measuring cup, you scoop it into your flour container, you use a knife or whatever, to even off the top, that's going to weigh about five and a half, five point six ounces, right? I figure five and a half ounces for a scooped cup of flour. For a sifted cup of flour, put your measuring cup empty on a paper plate or a sheet of parchment paper or wax paper. Get your flour in a sifter and sift it until it just mounds over and starts to overflow. Then again, use your flat knife, scrape it off and weigh that. That'll be about four and a half ounces. So I weigh my flour from now on in because there's so much variance. So for making two loaves of bread, I'm going to be using two pounds by weight of flour. If you don't have a digital scale, don't worry about it. Here's the math. If this weighs five and a half ounces of scooped flour, then six times five and a half is what? 33 ounces. So six cups. We got a train going by. I love living in a trailer park near the tracks, near the airport. Um, six cups of scooped flour is going to give you 33 ounces, which is right about two pounds, just an ounce over two pounds. Seven cups of sifted flour is going to give you 31 and a half ounces, one half ounce short of two pounds. So to get two pounds of flour, either use six cups of sifted flour, I'm sorry, six, six cups of scooped flour, or seven cups of sifted flour, or weigh it on a digital scale like I do. So having mentioned all that, let me get into the ingredients that I'm gonna be using for making my French bread today. The ingredients I use are simple enough. I have two pounds of bread flour. If you prefer, you can use all-purpose flour. In that French chef video that I saw, Julia Child said to use all-purpose flour rather than bread flour because bread flour has more protein in it and is likely to make the bread a little bit more tougher. I find that it's very delicate and very delicious using bread flour. So I'm using bread flour. I have two and a half cups of water. Sometimes when I make bread, I'll use a cup and a half of beer and a cup of water. I think the beer gives it a, I don't know, more breadier flavor, but for today I'm using two and a half cups of water because that's what tr that's what's traditional when making French bread. And then I have one tablespoon of yeast. This is powdered or dry instant yeast. I'm not sure whether this is instant or active dry, whatever. It's just dry yeast. And then I have two teaspoons of salt, which is lower than I've seen in other recipes. 
For example, in that French chef recipe, she used two teaspoons of salt for one pound of flour. So I'm using half the salt. I don't like my bread too salty, and here in the, the USA we have to reduce our sodium intake anyway, so I think two teaspoons of salt for two pounds of flour is just right. So those are the ingredients that I use for making my French bread. My first step here is to get my yeast all hot and bothered so it'll want to reproduce. So I'm not going to throw cold water into it. If you've ever thrown cold water on somebody who wants to reproduce, you know how effective that is. <laughs> I made myself laugh. So I have heated my water up to between 105 and 115 degrees. What is it currently? 113 degrees. That's good enough. I'm going to put half of my flour roughly in the bowl. Oh, and don't pay attention to those TV cooks who tell you, I don't, I don't sift my flour. I just zhuzh it up a little bit before I measure it. That tells me that's someone who knows how to cook but not how to bake. I'm going to pour my warm water in there and then add my yeast but not my salt yet and then using a wooden spoon I'm just going to mix this up I have my bowl here on a rubber mat because otherwise you hear this knocking as the bowl hits against my wooden counter and all this warmth and the starch in the flour will get that yeast all, as I mentioned, hot and bothered. It's going to want to do its thing. And I'm going to let this sit for about five minutes. I don't know whether they call that a sponge or not. It might be a sponge. Just to get my yeast started. And then I'll come back and finish combining my ingredients for my bread dough. My Sponge has been sitting for five minutes. I don't know whether you can see it or not, but I'm just noticing some bubbles starting to develop in there. So I know my yeast is active and alive. That's another reason why I didn't put any salt in there yet, because supposedly live yeast isn't crazy about salt. So if I want it to do its thing, I don't want to do anything that might spoil the mood. So um, I'm going to put in the rest of my flour here, or most of this. The reason why I say most is because I'm not going to get all of this incorporated in the bowl. I'm going to have to incorporate it when I need it. But I want to get this to the point where it's dry enough that I can turn it out onto the counter and start kneading. All right, that's starting to look dry enough there. And by the way, my dough is going to be sticky when you see me working with it. The, the, proportion of flour to water is on the sticky side but that's what I find is effective when I'm making my bread dough so let me get this turned out onto my counter I'm gonna put some flour down first that's why I have my apron on now because I'm going to get flour all over me in fact when I was watching Julia Child make French bread she was slapping her bread on the countertop. She had a marble stone that she was working with. While there was flour on the, the stone, and she had this streak of flour right across her apron. So I know that I have to wear my apron. And this is going to get sticky. What you're doing when you're kneading, there are supposedly two different proteins in flour that have something to do with glutens. And when you combine the water, those two proteins unite and make a gluten. And it's the gluten, I'm going to put my salt in now, it's the gluten that gives the bread its elasticity. I'm going to work slowly here as I start kneading this because this is still a sticky mass. But once I get enough flour incorporated into this, it'll get easier to work with. All right. Now, as you can see, I've got all my flour incorporated. This dough is not pretty. 
and smooth yet. That's going to happen when I'm going to need it. So I'm going to need this for five to ten minutes. That's going to do two things. One is it's going to hook up those proteins to make up my gluten chains in here. And those gluten chains are going to give my bread the elasticity I want it to have. And it'll also get it nice and smooth and pretty. So this is the kneading process. And I'm going to be panting like an old plow horse after about 10 minutes of this. Oh, and by the way, this is, as you can see, this is sticky. That's how I want my bread dough. I do want it to be on the sticky side, but if I work with this quickly, it doesn't really stick to my hands. And it'll get even better as that elasticity builds up with the gluten, the gluten chains. All right, I've been kneading my dough here for a while. I actually just let this rest for about five minutes while I washed my mixing bowl and then buttered it lightly, greased it lightly with butter. So you can see this is really smooth now. It's got a nice elastic texture to it. This isn't as good as it will be yet. Once this has a chance to rise, it'll get even better. So that's a beautiful bread dough. A tiny bit sticking. I can see little pieces still sticking to my fingers. That's what I want. Just a little bit sticking, but not so much that it's really sticking to my hands. So this dough is ready to rise. I'm going to put this in my mixing bowl here mix it around a little bit. Move it around a little bit just to cover it with some fat. And then I want this to actually rise slowly and triple in bulk. For the French bread, I'm going to let it rise up quite a bit and triple. And then um, it'll be ready to start doing a second rise. And then for the third rise, I'll actually let it do that after I shape it. So um, as far as, I don't know what else I was going to say. Oh, as far as the temperature to let letting this um, rise at. Normally I put my bowl on top of my refrigerator where it's warm, but because I want this to rise more slowly, I'm going to cover this and actually put it down on the floor where it's cooler. I want this to rise at around, I don't know, 68, 70 degrees rather than 75, 80 degrees. I want a slower rise out of this. It's going to help to mature the flavor a little bit better and help to, to um, give it a better texture. My dough has been rising now for about two hours. You can see, when I take this off, how much the bulk has increased. I don't know that that's three times the bulk or not, but it's risen quite a bit. I'm not going to really punch this down like you would bread dough and really deflate it. I'm just going to pull this out. and leave it somewhat inflated. I just want to fold this like in thirds, pull it together, and then I'm going to fold this in half and roll that into, you can see how sticky that is. It's a very moist dough. And then I'm going to put this back in my bowl, cover that, and let that rise again. Again, and, and the second time, it's maybe going to rise about an hour. The first rise was for about two hours, it turned out. The second rise, it's a little bit sticky there, which is cool, because that's what I want. I want a very moist bread dough. The second rise should go for about an hour, and then I'll be ready to start shaping my loaves. For my third rising, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of these French bread pans, or however you however you want to describe that. It will help the bottom to have a rounded um, curve to it rather than being more like a flat loaf. And um, it's got these, these holes in it that will help the crust to be more crisp on the bottom side rather than against metal. Sometimes when I use this, I use parchment paper in there. I'm not going to do that this time because the parchment paper does act as a moisture barrier and I wouldn't, probably not going to get the same crisp outside dough, outside crust rather, as I would by just leaving these holes open. So let me get my bread dough in. 
I'm going to cut this in half and start shaping my two loaves. And to shape these, I'm just going to flatten this down, bring one third of it in, flatten it in, bring the other third in and press that in. And then with the seam side up, I'm going to do a trough kind of thing. You can either use the back of your hand or you can use this part of your hand to make a trough and then bring the dough up and pinch it together. And then the final step, just roll this out to make your, your bread dough, your bread loaf shape. And then rolling this over so that the better part is up top. I'm going to place that inside of my pan. I'm going to stretch that a little bit so I have more dough down here. Now oh, it ain't pretty, but it'll work. Same thing with this piece of dough. Flatten it out a little bit. Bring in a third, bring in a third, press it together, get that last seam up, make a trough, and then pinch it together. What you're doing when you're pinching it together like this is you're actually stretching the bread dough along the surface on this outside to try to help to have a very smooth outside to your dough. Got a bubble there I want to pop. All right, bring that in. This is actually going to be a prettier loaf, I can tell by looking at it. So this prettier loaf is the one that I'm going to give to my friend. The last step is I want to cover this with plastic wrap and let it sit for maybe 45 minutes to let that finish rising and then it'll be ready to go into the oven. Before it goes into the oven, I will slash those tops for the baking. My dough has been rising. You can see that I have it covered with plastic here. I don't know how well you can see it. You can probably see that there's a seam here. This is two 12 inch wide pieces of plastic wrap. I hate my 12 inch wide plastic wrap. I bought it on speculation, I guess. It's the warehouse store brand. As soon as that box is empty, I'm going back to my 18-inch wrap, and I'll never buy 12-inch wrap again. See how easily that lifts off? Before I put my plastic wrap on, I patted it very lightly with butter so that it wouldn't stick. I was afraid it might tear my very delicate dough. All right. I'm going to set my oven. How hot do you want to bake these? I like a soft crusted bread. So normally when I bake bread, I go to 375 degrees. I know that a French bread has to have a hard crackly crust on it. So I'm going to bake these at 425 degrees. So I'm going to go heat my oven up and then we'll talk about the tops. Before this goes into the oven, it, the uh, bread does have to be slit. So before I do that, I put this on a, a baking sheet, by the way. I'm just a little bit nervous about the edges of my bread overriding this loaf pan that's on the inside. So my, my baking sheet will give me a little more support. Some chefs use a razor blade. Some use a very a special knife that's used for slitting bread. I'm just going to use my paring knife, but I'm going to lightly run this over my diamond hone because I want to get a razor sharp edge on there. I don't want to ice skate down my fingernail. It should grip my fingernail and that's a good sharp knife. So that's ready for that. The other thing I want to show you is I've got a plastic bottle here that I've marked with water only. I use this obviously only for water. I'm going to put water in this so that when I put my dough in the oven, my loaves, here in a mobile home, any kitchen really, we, 
I don't know of anyone who has a proper oven, a steaming oven, a moist oven for baking French loaves. So we have to use something like this to introduce water into the oven. When I put my loaves into the oven, I'm going to spray them down a little bit with water and then I'm going to spray some water around the inside of my oven, close the door, wait a minute, do that again, close the door, wait a minute, do that again, and then close the door and wait maybe three or four minutes and then do it a final time and that should give me the moisture I need to at least get that crust started so I'll have that thin, actually I'll have a thick, crisp, crackly crust. Returning back to here, how to slit the loaves. I noticed with Italian bread, did you see where it was sticking a little bit right there? That's what I was afraid of and that's why I buttered that. This is the better loaf so this is the one I'm going to give away. I noticed with Italian loaves a lot of them have one big long slit down the inside center of the loaf. I'm going to do actually long angular slits because I want to get kind of an S curve a little bit to the shape of the bread on top. I think of that S curve as being like a French curve. And you don't want to go down completely down the side but starting part way down the side just cutting through the surface in a nice long cut. Overlapping the two cuts like so and then finding one more cut overlapping down here. That's that one. Long thin cuts. And you don't want to cut very deep. Maybe a quarter of an inch to an eighth of an inch deep into the dough. Okay, and I can already see some separation taking place. This is ready to go into the oven. So I'm going to place my bread in my oven. Again, that's 425 degrees. And now I'm going to start spraying. Spraying the wall of the oven, spraying the bread. I'm going to straighten that out a little bit. And then let that go for about a minute. I'm going to be doing my final spraying here. Okay. And then I'm going to set my oven timer for 20 minutes. I'm taking a little bit of an inter-baking break here. My bread has about three, three and a half minutes left to go. My kitchen is filled with the aroma of baking bread. This is one of the most exciting times about baking and I'm doing this because I really want to seduce you into baking bread. Even though I've done it so many times, I still love the process of baking bread. So please experiment and do this. I think it's well worth the effort and when you get really good at it, the rewards are, well, what can you compare them to? Okay, my bread is just about ready to come out of the oven. I checked the internal temperature. It should be somewhere between 180 and 200 degrees Fahrenheit. It was 196. Couldn't get much better than that. So I'm going to turn my oven off and then open the door a little bit and let it sit in the oven for another five minutes. Okay, now it's time for my unveiling. My bread is ready to come out of my oven. Oh my gosh, this looks so beautiful. Look at that bread. Isn't that wonderful? Can you hear that tapping? Nice, solid, I mean, finished loaf of bread. My next step is to move this onto a cooling rack, let it cool down. You don't want to cut bread when it's warm like this because fresh from the oven, the starches haven't finished forming in there. It's, it's cooked, but it has to, it has to cool for the texture in the inside to completely finish. So let me get these moved to a cooling rack. Okay, doesn't that look delicious? I want you to hear now what they sound like. Can I get my microphone down close? 
Hear that crackle? Nice, crisp, crackly surface. So these, this bread has turned out perfectly. This is the prettier loaf, so I'm going to give this loaf away, and then this is the loaf we're going to have this evening with our dinner. French bread. My bread has cooled enough that I'm ready to slice this and see what it looks like on the inside. I know that crust is crackly good. Ah, uh, look at that. Look at the crumb. Doesn't that look delicious? Nice homemade bread. I'm going to put some butter on that and see how that tastes. And that is, I think, just delicious homemade French bread. All right, here I am. I have my piece of bread buttered, ready to taste it. Mmm. Mmm. It's delicious. It's got a very tender crumb to it. I can hear it in my teeth. I don't know whether you can hear it when I bite into it. It's got crisp, crackly crushed. What I'm really surprised is that at 425 degrees, I'm surprised the crust wasn't browner, thicker, drier. I don't like too much of a crust on a bread. But this is very good. It just tastes delicious. It's wonderful. So make your own homemade bread when you can. It's fantastic. And listen to the sirens going by. Oh, and by the way, the weatherman vindicated himself. It's raining. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.